G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, AKA Hippo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this cool spiral effect with an After Effects, and also run through some awesome effects that can help you make some really trippy artwork like this. Trigger warning, I might say the word trippy one too many times in this tutorial. Here we are with an After Effects, your happy place. So what are we gonna talk about today? First of all, I'm gonna show you how to create a trippy spiral like this. I'm sure you're getting hypnotized as you watch this. Really cool, simple effect, a great tool to be able to create some uh, really interesting backgrounds or just interesting movement within anything that you do, so artwork or motion graphics or anything like that. And then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about different effects that help you create something weird and trippy like this. Now, whether you're just doing this for fun um, as part of a project, or maybe you're making your first um, NFT artwork or something like that, I'll go through a couple of tips and show you some real cool effects built in with an After Effects that help you create something like this. Heads up as well, the project files um, are in the description below. Click the link, download the file, and you can follow along. First up, how do we create a trippy spiral like this? The great thing about After Effects is it has a really robust or relatively robust shape system built in. And these shapes are all vector, which means they are infinitely scalable. And if you brought something, a shape in from uh, Photoshop that you created there, brought it over, that shape will not be infinitely scalable. You'll start seeing pixels around the edges. Whereas with the shapes that you make within After Effects, they are vector. So that's what we're gonna start with the spiral. We're gonna start with a circle, and then quite simply, we're gonna duplicate that shape, choose our colors, and go from there. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start a new composition here, and I'm gonna do 1920 by 1080, and I'm gonna make it six seconds long, 25 frames a second, let's go, okay. Now let's rename our comp. I'm gonna call it uh, spiral and toot. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a background. So layer, new, solid, or control Y, and I'm gonna call this my BG layer, and the blue I'm gonna choose is 009CFF. Okay, and then we're gonna bring in our first shape. So what you do is come over here to your rectangle tool, hover over it, and go to ellipse. Now if you're on a layer, if you've got a layer selected and you draw on that layer, you'll see that it creates a mask. You don't want that, click away from the layer, then when you click and drag, you can see that you're creating a shape layer. So let's do that again. Um, click away from your layer down here and let's draw a shape like so. And I'll go shift, hold shift, and it creates the circle there. Now that's created a circle that's the exact same blue as before. So let's pick our fill here and let's just make that a darker color like that. Okay, so as long as you have your shape layer selected, um, you can change the color up here. So let's just click up here on our selection tool or press V on the keyboard. Um, and what we wanna do is uh, make this circle exactly in the middle. So click on window and make sure you have your align window open. It looks like this over here. And we're just gonna align it horizontally and align it vertically. So now that circle is perfectly in the middle. Now what we're gonna do is animate the scale of the shape. So select your layer and press S on the keyboard for scale. Come here to zero. Um, make a keyframe and then come forward to two and a half seconds. So two seconds and 13 frames and add another keyframe there. Now this is the length of our scaling animation. So the first one, I'm gonna change that to zero. And the next one, the last one, I'm gonna scale that up till it completely fills the screen like that. So it's filling the whole screen and then staying there for the duration of the composition. So now we're gonna get our second shape in there. We've already animated this uh, shape and we're just gonna duplicate that, shift it and change the color. So for this layer, click the layer, rename it circle one and press control D to duplicate. Now, as long as uh, the first one's named circle one, if you duplicate that layer, it'll be circle two, three, four, and so on. So it'll be a little bit easier in the naming department. So click on that second circle and then color pick up here. Make sure that circle is selected color pick the same blue that we have for the background. Now in total, we're gonna to have eight circles, uh, four of each color. So circle one is this darker blue, and then circle two is the same blue as the background. We're gonna make four versions of circle one and four versions of circle two. So this is the quickest way to do it. Press on circle one and duplicate it once, move it above circle two. Then click on circle two, duplicate it, 
and move it above circle three. Then click on circle three, duplicate, move it above circle four, then click on circle four, duplicate, and so on and so forth, alternating back to the previous number until you get eight total circles. We want each of these layers to come in exactly 10 frames after the previous layer. There's a couple of ways to do this depending on what type of keyboard you have. So option one, select all of your layers from number two up to number eight and press Alt on the keyboard and page down 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you select the next ones without number two. Alt on the keyboard, page down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on and so forth until we have a 10 frame gap between all of them. Alternatively, select all your circles from two and above, press Shift Alt page down, and that'll move it exactly 10 frames forward. And you select your next few, excluding circle two, Shift Alt page down. Then you select the next ones, Shift Alt page down, and so on and so forth. If you don't have a full size keyboard, the absolute quickest way to do it is to take note of the length of your composition. So this composition is five seconds and six frames, and it's 25 frames per second, which means every 25th frame is a new second. So right click all of your layers, come to Keyframe Assistant, and then Sequence Layers. And then what you're gonna do with the help of this handy little notepad is count back 10 frames from five seconds and six frames at the end of the composition. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Brings us down to four seconds and 22 frames. Um, as you can see here, the 25th frame after four seconds and 24 is a new second. Also make sure to include the final second of the composition. So four seconds and 22 frames and okay, that'll perfectly sequence your layers every 10 frames. There's also a way to do it manually. Move to 10 frames on your timeline, select circle two, and then press the open square bracket to move it to that point of the timeline. So whatever you time you have here, if you click on a layer and then press the open square bracket, it'll move that layer to that point. So I've moved that one to 10 frames. Now I wanna to go to 10 more frames. So you can do that by holding control on the keyboard and pressing forward arrow 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Click on that next layer and press open square bracket. Then move 10 more frames forward. So control forward arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Click on that next layer and then open square bracket and so on and so forth until you get through all eight of them. So that first circle to appear is circle one, dark blue. Circle two is then light blue. Then we made a duplicate of circle one, which turned into circle three, which is dark blue. And then so on and so forth, dark, light, dark, light, dark light until we finish on that full blue screen of the original blue. So quick recap, we made that first shape, aligned it in the middle, made a second version that was a different color and then duplicated each one um, alternatively, the two different colors uh, and moved them 10 frames forward every time. That created a perfect gap there between the two shapes as they animate out. Um, and then we finish on a circle that is the same color as the background. What we're gonna do now is apply this hue cycle and also add that cool um, wobble around the edges of the circles. So go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, enter on that layer and call it effects. And the first effect we're gonna add onto that layer, so right click that layer, go to effect, is under color correction, hue, saturation. Go to your effect controls uh, tab and what we're going to animate is the channel range. So click the little stopwatch on channel range at the beginning of your timeline, then move forward to about three seconds and 18 frames. And then all you need to do is click on this little zero X here and type in one. Now what that's going to do, if you type in one X, that means uh, that rotation is going to rotate once around. So 360 degrees. So instead of having to type in the number in the degrees area here, you can just type in how many times we want it to go around. So that's once. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So it goes from blue through all the way back to blue. So once that circle completely disappears out of frame, we're gonna press N for November on the keyboard, come up to composition and trim comp to work area. So now we've got a tight, timeline here and it's going to loop through once it goes back to blue and back looping. All right, on that same effects layer, we're going to right click and go to effect um, and then come down to distort and turbulent displace. Then you're going to change the uh, displacement type to bulge and you change the amount to 20 
and the size to 110. Now, if you see some weird edges on your background there, just come down to your background and scale it up so it uh, leaves no gaps around the edges. So you can have a play with these displacement types, amounts and size, whatever you think looks cool. I think that looks pretty cool, so I'm happy with that. Guys, that is the trippy spiral. That's how quick and easy it is to create something like this. I'm just gonna show you two sneaky little extra things which um, can make it a little bit more trippy. If you wanna experiment, why not? So have you ever um, tried a kaleidoscope? So it's one of those little um, tube thingies, you look through it and it creates some awesome shapes. Well, there's actually an effect with an After Effects called CC Collider, and that imitates a kaleidoscope. So I'll just show you what I've done here. I've applied CC Collider. You can see it's made some pretty trippy shit. So there's lots of cool little settings you can change here. You can change the mirroring type. Um, look, that looks pretty cool. And you can start seeing here that if you experiment with some of these effects and put them together, you can get some really cool stuff. You know, perfect for abstract backgrounds or, or anything you can imagine, really. I mean, that's the beauty of all these effects. You might not always use them, but you try them out, combine them, and you can create something uh, special. And one more cool effect you can try is mosaic under stylized. So if we pop our mosaic on there, it's created a pretty cool 8-bit or pixelized um, effect. So have a play with those extra effects, but yeah, that is how we create a trippy spiral with that hue cycle, with the uh, bulging uh, displacement and the offset circles animating their scale. So I don't know if you can see, what's that in the background? Oh yeah, it's the trippy spiral that we just created. I'm just gonna run through a couple of built-in effects within After Effects to show you how to create something trippy like this. Like I said before, the project files are in the description below, so download them, I've included all the footage, so you can go through and play around with all the effects I've applied um, as we go along. This will just be a quick overview, um, but if you do want an in-depth tutorial on this design, then let me know in the comments below. I filmed myself simply in front of a plain background. I then used the Roto Brush tool to automatically detect my outline and create a clean mat. You can also use a green screen and it'll be a little bit quicker. And now I have this perfectly cut out image of me spinning my head and looping back and forth. I've tinted the footage black and white and used Mocha for After Effects to track my glasses and create two clean tracked masks. These masks are then imported back into After Effects to create these clean cutouts. I put my trippy spiral background that we just learned how to make into the background, applied the unsharp mask effect to my face footage, a mount 500 radius about 350, threshold about 69, I've created an adjustment layer and applied post-rise time with a frame rate of 8 for that choppy frame rate look. 25% of noise as well with used color noise unchecked. And VR chromatic aberration added a monoscopic horizontal field of view 190, vertical field of view 110. That's giving us those chromatic aberrations around the edges of the face. I then 3D tracked my face using animation track camera. Selected those 3D points around the glasses, right-clicked, created a solid, moved it below the face, scaled it and rotated it slightly and moved it back in Z space, and then just scaled it and moved it around to cover the empty space. Then pre-composed that shape and applied the effect generate grid. And that created that floating grid in the background in 3D space. So we've combined that trippy spiral that we made with some of these effects within After Effects that really ends up making something a bit different and something special. Posterized time gives us that choppy look. The noise and the chromatic aberration just distorts it and makes it look cool. And using that 3D tracker for something like this to move that grid back in 3D space and create this weird spatial effect with that grid, um, it's a really cool way of using the 3D camera tracker. You know, usually the 3D camera tracker is used for environments or um, adding a sign or adding 3D text in, a, in an environment, but this is another cool way to use it. This unsharp mask effect, I just happened upon it. I was playing around with um, some of the blur tools and the unsharp mask effect uh, stood out had this, and had this cool effect on my image, similar to what the CC threshold effect might do, um, but just maybe a little bit cleaner. And Mocha for After Effects, of course, you guys probably know. I love Mocha for After Effects. I love that it's free and it makes the process of something like this where we're creating mats or masks to mask my um, eyes out. Very uh, simple and easy. If you guys want something in depth on Mocha and this type of stuff, you can check out my previous tutorial about screen replacement, um, but I will do something a little bit more specific in Mocha around this as well. 
So that's it. We created this trippy spiral. I went through how to create that 10 frame gap and how to get that wobbly circle image and how to get that scale out. I also ran through some of the effects that I think are awesome to add on to uh, something quite simple, just a turning head and turn it into something far more special like this. I think the lesson that I want to want to pass on today is that experiment in After Effects, Ex try out all the different effects. It's worth going through that list and just trying them out and see what happens. You might find something that clicks or you might discover something completely new that you never knew before. So take a look. Really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more tutorials like this or there was something in the tutorial that you want me to cover, um, let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys.